Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. The local time is 9.51 in the morning, and we will begin our program on faults and folds at the top of the hour. Thank you for joining us. So that's less than 10 minutes away. If you're watching this in replay, of course, you can scrub ahead 10 minutes if you don't want to deal with all this preliminary stuff. I've gotten a bunch of uh, uh, questions about these globes that move. Uh, they somehow are working with the magnetic field of the Earth. I'm not making that up. And so they're not cheap, but my mommy bought one for me, MOVA or MOVA globes. This episode of Nick from the Classroom, hello Mason, brought to you by Move a Globes. You've got to love it. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Are we functional? Oh, I forgot my water. Forgot my hot water. And I'm, I'm yellow, aren't I? I'm back to being yellow again. So first off, are we functional? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Free Bird. Mm. Oh, we have a late arriving crowd this morning in the, in the classroom. Typical uh, post midterm experience. But I hope most people show up. Okay, we are five by five. Let me see if I can go into this. So, widescreen. He pops out the advanced like a boss. I got the white balance off. I got, I don't want to screw with it. Color intensity. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, well, we'll see if those settings stick, but I kind of like that. That was kind of fun. I do need a, a drink real quick. Give me a second. Mason, you're ready for action. Aiden, Christina, track and field, Eve, Tawny, Devante. I'm in the hallway. Hey, how's it going? Good. This is the sound of me drinking out of a water fountain. Back in Wisconsin, we called it bubblers. I'm at the bubbler. Whew. Hot mic. Can you hear me out here? I'm in the hallway. <coughs> Mommy, why is that man talking to himself? Good morning. It's Emily. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Oh, they're filtering in now. God love them. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's gloomy out, foggy, misty, wet. Got a lot of snow yesterday. It's melting a little bit today. Pedro, good morning. Uh, who can we say hi to here uh, briefly? And I have... Uh, Actually, you know what? Well, yeah, let me say hi to a couple people first. Uh, Joni says Emily 1 and Emily 2. That's right. We have both Emilys. We have to decide which Emily is which. They, they're smirking right now. I can see behind their... I can I see, see their eyes crinkling, so I know that they're smirking behind their mask. Uh, Alice is in Canada. Good morning. Uh, Jao in Portugal. I'll never get your name correctly. Sorry. Pat Miller, Yakima. Joe's in Denver, Arkansas, again, huh? Uh, Eric's in Marion, Virginia, good morning. DC Metro, Caldwell, Idaho, uh, Barber's in Indiana. Uh, Long Strike says, good morning, townies. Oh, not talking to us, right, we're not a townie. Anna is in Finland. Uh, somebody's in China, good morning. Good morning, somebody, went too fast. Jamaica, good morning. Phoenix, Arizona. I think sometimes the students think I'm making this up, like I'm just naming places, but I, I promise. Dick's in the Netherlands. 
Uh, Grandpa Carl, uh, Granger Clay Pits. I'm a little, uh, let me, f Daddy's getting picky now. All right. I, uh, I got another camera that showed up in the mail. This one I bought. And uh, so I was screwing around with it. So now my normal, I am widescreen, right? Yeah. Oh, I gotta get I gotta get a prop down the hall. Good lord. Okay, so we're gonna test the uh, wireless microphone again. Okay, I'm gonna go down the hall. We'll see when you stop hearing me. I got three minutes. Thank you for joining us. Uh, there's a weird energy in the room. I think because people are nervous about their test results and they know they're gonna get their test results back today. Like an exam. I shouldn't say test results. They're getting their exams back. Does that explain the mood? I don't know. Oh, the people in the front. Oh. Mason, introduce yourself to those folks now. Come on. All right. I'm still in the hall, but I'm going to walk away. I'll bet you guys can hear me now. Can you hear me now? 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 I'm walking into the classroom now. Okay. Exciting. Skrillex. Skillet. What was it? What was the band? Skillet? I got to play some Skillet. Oh man, it's really quiet in here. I'm not, okay. I'm not gonna make another comment about it. Uh huh. All right. That's 600 watching. Closing that. <laughs> I got one more minute. It gives me just enough time. So most everybody is here. So I'm going to talk to the townies and I'm going to talk to you guys at the same time. Okay. So one of our viewers from home, one of our townies uh, sent me a box and uh, it arrived here at school and it says just a little something to share with the actual students. Cheers from Joe in Massachusetts. So Joe, Thank you. What's inside of the box from Joe? It says Nom. It's perishable. Any guesses? Lobsters, what? I can't hear you. So this is David's fresh, baked fresh since 1979. I think they're cookies. This is a tin of cookies from Joe in Massachusetts. I'm gonna break the seal like a boss. Oh yeah. Oh, come to Papa. Okay, so when you are sobbing at the end of class, as you look at your exam, you can uh, uh, cram your open mouth with delightful uh, tasting cookies. I'm going to put this tin right out in the middle of the room, okay? Sobbing cookies. 
Okay, everybody, I'm glad most of us are here. Who are we missing? We know who we're missing. Sorry, Mason. I'm missing a couple others as well. But most of us are here, and that is a wonderful thing. Are we ready to go? Okay, so uh, I've given you a chance to copy down the outline. You can see it as well as I. Uh, we do have a lecture in store. That's why we have so many uh, viewers. They're, they're wanting to learn new things, and hopefully you are too. And I will keep an eye on the clock. And at uh, 10.40, uh, the last 10 minutes of today, I'll be done with the lecture. Uh, I will show you the results of midterm one, which you took on Tuesday, and um, give you a little pep talk. Uh, both my parents were coaches at the high school level, so I've been uh, indoctrinated in coach speak. So I'll coach you up best I can. And then uh, you'll have a chance to look at the results of the exam. You'll see your exam. The answers are posted down the hall outside of my office right now on the bulletin board. Uh, but I'm going to keep your exams. So you're going to go down, check out, commiserate with each other, eat your cookies from Joe, and then come back and give me my exam. Uh, give me all the exams stay put before you leave the building, okay? That's the plan. Okay, let's go ahead then and uh, get into this. Um, some did well on the exam, some did very poorly. We'll talk about it. But regardless of how you did on the exam, can you make some kind of major mark in your notebook, some sort of threshold, some sort of, I don't know, paper clipped whatever? Today is a new day. In other words, we've done one third of the class and we're leaving that. We're leaving those concepts for the most part. We'll go back and grab a couple things. But for the most part, that's water under the bridge. And especially, I guess, part of my, part of my pep talk early, I guess, especially if you did poorly, let's start from scratch. Let's forget about the first third of the class. And let's build from, this is day one, essentially. And we are going to build, for the rest of this class, from now until mid-March, we're going to build each day on the previous day's lecture. And so attendance is huge, attention to detail is huge, but this point in your notebook is kind of, you know, uh, yesterday and today. And today is day one of the, next, the rest of the class. Because we're talking about plate tectonics. You've been introduced to plate tectonics at some point. It is the main set of ideas that I'm passing along to you in this class. And we will apply all sorts of plate tectonic knowledge to Washington. So we've gotten a third of the way through this class without talking about moving plates or mountains or anything. But it's time that we get cracking on that. So the title of the lecture is Faults and Folds, and we start with a concept. I'm going to give it to you verbally. I'm worried about you right now. The energy is weird. I don't know what it is, but it's weird. But I, I have your attention at least, so let's get ready to get some stuff down. Ready? I'm going to give a few things to you verbally, and then I'm going to do a bunch. I got props today. I'm not a prop guy. I got props out the yin-yang today. Verbal message number one. The Earth's crust has been damaged in certain places. The crust was not damaged, was not uh, complicated for a long time, and then, quote-unquote, something happened. And the earth's crust in places got damaged or got deformed. So that's what I mean by crustal deformation. And today we're going to look at different ways that the earth has been deformed in certain places. How do we know certain places have been deformed and other places have not? Well, there's one way to answer that. It's where the mountains are. Have you really thought about why mountains exist? Probably not. Well, if this is Geology 101, let's ask, why do mountains exist? Well, the mountains haven't always been there. That's maybe a new thought for you. We haven't always had mountains between here and Seattle. We haven't always had Washington State. That's a whole nother topic. But the mountains between here and Seattle had a birth, had a growth. And they're still with us, the Cascade Mountains. We could do the same with the Rocky Mountains or the Himalayas. We can go anywhere on this amazing Move a Globe. This episode of Nick from the Classroom brought to you by Move a Globes. It's a moving. That's the slogan? Weak. 
So we know that not all continents have the same kinds of mountains, and we know that the, the continents have mountains in certain spots. The mountains exist where the crust has been deformed. Okay, more coming conceptually in just a second, but let's do a little roadmap of today. Brittle and ductile are two different styles of deformation. So this is an organization day. If you just view each individual thing as an, a separate idea, it's not going to work. And that's really a theme for the rest of the class, I might add. We want new concepts, and then we want to fit those new concepts into something that we've done previously. So we're starting with that practice today. Brittle deformation versus ductile deformation. So deformation, that's the category. Uh, the earth, when it does deform, deforms brittly sometimes, deforms ductily other times. Okay, what the hell are you talking about? Well, more challenge for you. Brittle deformation comes in the form of geologic faults. Faults like you had on page 2. We're going to use the yellow book a fair amount today. On page 2, do you recall, with the relative age dating day, you had two different faults. Those are the result of brittle deformation. The crust deformed and it cracked. Faults are cracks. And before we quit today, we're going to learn the difference between a normal fault and a reverse fault. That's brittle deformation. So brittle deformation is cracking. But ductile deformation is not cracking, it's warping. This is all elementary school content today, I must say. But the challenge is to organize it properly and to have some visuals today. That's why I have all these props. So brittle deformation, sure, we're going to make either normal faults or reverse faults. Ductile deformation, I haven't really showed you what that is yet. And there's pictures coming as well. That's warping the crust, not cracking it. And yes, the result of ductile deformation are geologic folds. And we have two names of those, anticlines and synclines. So you know I'm not a jargon guy. You know I'm not into coming up with all sorts of foreign words for you to study and memorize and then forget about as quickly as possible. But we are dealing with these terms throughout the rest of the class, and we want to make sure we know what they are all about. Okay? So where can I find a bunch of faults and folds? Go to the frickin' mountains, man. That's where the crust has been deformed. It's a grisly example, but I'll go ahead and say it anyway. If there's a bad accident out on the freeway, and God forbid there's some sort of drunk driver, you know these stories. They get on the wrong ramp, they're hammered, and they're driving the wrong way on the freeway, sometimes at high speed, and we know what's going to happen. A head-on collision, an absolutely tragic accident. It's the leading edge of those two vehicles that are going to be severely deformed, right? If there's a head-on collision on the freeway between a, dead, a drunk driver going the wrong way and the family van. But the back bumpers on those two vehicles are going to be unharmed, typically, unless there's tons of rolling over and everything else. So think of the front of those vehicles in this grisly accident as where the crustal deformation is the most severe. And who comes out? Well, the 911, the fire, everybody else, we try to deal with all that. But then there's this detective work. Like we didn't really, we don't have a cam there. We didn't really see the head-on collision, but now we're going out as uh, state troopers or whatever, and we're measuring this and we're figuring out, oh, the engine block was pushed into the whatever, the windshield shattered. You can reconstruct speed. You can reconstruct exactly when and how and where. Without anybody seeing it, we can reconstruct that collision, as terrible as it is to visualize that. That's the game of crustal deformation, sometimes called structural geology in science. Okay, I have you now. The energy is great. So let me screw that up by doing circus time. I'm not a prop guy. Before I do circus time, let me come to you for the first time. Why do you suppose the crust deforms brittly sometimes, making faults, and ductily other times, making folds. Why isn't it all brittle? Why isn't it all ductile? Why do we have these two very different kinds of uh, deformational styles 
um, sometimes in the same collision. Anybody? Don't leave me hanging now. Yeah. Hope. Hope? Yeah. Hope. Hope thinks maybe there's rock types that are different. I'm going to put words in your mouth now. Hope says maybe there's soft rock that's going to fold and some hard rock that's going to crack. Maybe there's different hardnesses of rock in these two things that are colliding. I love it. It's not the overriding theory, though. or It's not the overriding rule. There's something uh, much more regular and long-lasting with any place on the world. But that's a great start. Somebody else, real quick. Yeah, Tim. Yep. There might be a difference in speed. We might have a faster collision. Make I'm just, again, I'm kind of taking this and running with it. Maybe faster collision or faster deformation makes is more likely to have brittle cracking versus ductile folding. Mason? Maybe different densities. So again, we're thinking of different kinds of rocks. Thank you for the participation. I'm still hunting. Oh, why not? Let's do the circus thing. So I'm not a prop guy. But I have in this, these are two ice packs. So I had to run down the hall to go to the freezer. Uh, there's a freezer down the lab, past my office. And I only go into Happy's Market once a quarter. You know, have you been to Happy's? This episode of Nick from the Classroom brought to you by Happy's Market in downtown Ellensburg. You've got to love it. So I only go in once a quarter, and they go, yeah, mm, they know I'm in there for big hunk candy bars. Big hunk candy bars. You can see them from where you're sitting. Big hunk candy bars. And this one has been frozen overnight. It's a temperature thing. Yes, there's rock uh, differences. Yes, there's speed differences. Yes, there's other things, density differences. But it's the main uh, message is we have brittle deformation in mountains when the rock is cold. Let me demonstrate for you. I need, I need to, I want to demonstrate to both cameras at the same time. Yeah, I can do it right here. Keep in your window right there, says the director. Okay. So you can follow this, but it's just fun. Props always feel like they're overkill, but people remember them. Okay. Big hunk candy bar. Mm, you got to love it. Okay, this is what a big hunk candy bar. There's, there's some right there, front, front desk. It always takes me 10 minutes to figure out where they are, and then they're like right there at the front. Okay. So I am going to, with my fingers here, deform this big hunk candy bar. Ready and go. Doink. Ready and go. Uh, doink. It's frozen. Am I deforming the Big Hunk Candy Bar? Ooh, that was a good one. Peanuts are flying now. Am I deforming the Big Hunk Candy Bar in a ductile or brittle sense? This is brittle, baby. I'm making faults. I'm cracking this cold, frozen Big Hunk Candy Bar. And I'm using my fingers to do it. And all I'm doing with my fingers is I'm doing this. Pull, I don't know, pulling down and I, I, whatever. I'm just doing that with my hands. Look at my pinkies. Okay? Brittle deformation, the big hunk is cold. Now, what do I need to demonstrate a ductile deformation of a big hunk candy bar? Mason. You're going to take a ah, what do I need? Uh, warmer I need warmer temperatures. And that is the message that I need warm rock, not cold rock. And I can do the same deformation. I can do the same if it hasn't dawned on you yet, we're talking about colliding continents. We're right back to dynamo thermal metamorphism in many cases. We're colliding North America with Africa. It's slow motion, but if we have cold crust involved in the collision, it will crack and make faults. If we have warm crust involved in the collision between continents, we will fold. We will ductally deform. Now, if I was a great instructor, I would have another prop. And I would have a warm, big hunk candy bar somehow. I don't know, like I have a microwave or something. I'd like go, run down the hall and grab it. <clears throat> I guess I'm not a very good instructor. I don't have that for you. Or do I? Pedro. 
Eyebrow goes up. I like it. All right. I got to get on camera for this. Hope is averting her eyes. I went to the dentist this morning. I visited with some folks. And all that time, since 7 o'clock this morning, I've had a Big Hunk candy bar in my pants. Devante, this one's for you. All right. You don't know about that? So, this is the same Big Hunk candy bar. I bought it at the same store at the same time. Same ingredients. I'm going to unwrap it. And under its own weight, it's going to deform. It's going to ductally deform. Look, Ma, no hands. Oh, but you want me to do that little pinky thing I was doing? Sure, I can do that. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, huh? What? Oh, interesting. It still hasn't cracked. I haven't fractured it once. Remember the peanuts were flying with this other, with this other big hunk? It's a temperature thing. We've got it all figured out by now. We know that's the story. And even with the same hand motion to the same big hunk candy bar with the same person doing the whatever this is, we have a completely different style of deformation, and that's why we have brittle versus ductile deformation. Okay, it's time to draw something. Let's pick up the pace. It's been super easy so far. Let's keep it super easy, but let's pick up the pace as far as what you should be uh, engaging with. What? Terrible grammar there. So let me, let's draw together, and let me... Draw one continent. It can be Africa if you want. Struggling with my cameras this morning. Another continent. Let's have them on a collision course. Now, are you aware that continents move? Are you aware that plate tectonics is a thing? It's not an idea. It's measured now. We have instruments around the world that show that every continent is moving a different direction. And the rate of movement on average is two inches a year. Two inches a year. North America is moving two inches a year. If you let your fingernails grow for one year, depending on how much milk you drink, that's a couple inches worth of fingernail growth. North America is moving at the rate that your fingernails are growing. That's an average number, two inches a year. So if we have two inches a year to the east and two inches a year to the west, and we do that motion, and we eventually get these two continents to kiss, and we keep going two inches this way and this way, there's a space problem, and we're going to start to, ding, 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 deform the crust and start to form a mountain range at the boundary between these two colliding continents. But the thing we want to emphasize, and this is a phony number, but we're going to use it anyway, at a depth of 15 kilometers, at a depth below the surface, 15 kilometers depth. There's so many exceptions to the rule, I almost hesitate doing it, but I think for our purposes it will work. That's a magic threshold, a magic boundary, 15 kilometers down between where we're going to form faults and where we're going to form folds. You tell me, are we going to form the faults upstairs or downstairs? Up or down for faults? Up, why? It's colder, why? It's getting hotter the deeper you go down. Correct, well done. So we know that as you get closer and closer to hell, it gets hotter and hotter, deeper into the earth, right? So it's cold crust in the upper 15 kilometers compared to the lower 50, or below the 15 kilometer threshold. So most of you are already writing stuff down, getting sentences down, etc. Would you mind closing those doors? I don't know why we're choosing during the one hour this day that we have a class that we're going to start to fire up the vacuum cleaners out there.
Thank you. Brittle versus ductile. Just pull it closed. Just pull it closed. Thank you. Oh, you sure? Did you eat your Wheaties? It's okay. It's all right. Thank you. I don't know what's going on with this document camera today, but you can, you can, you've got it. So we're forming faults upstairs, and the faults get less concentrated as we get away from this boundary. So this is a boundary between our two continents. And for tens of millions of years, we are actively colliding this zone. Can you think of how much defor deformation we must be talking about here? But magically, we're forming cracks and warps. We're forming brittly deformed big hunk and ductily deformed big hunk at the same, in the same collision. If you don't have it yet, we're forming faults in the upper 15 and folds down below because the rock is warmer as we go deeper into that mountain range. You have it now. Thought question for you. How in the hell is it possible for us to see folds at all then? If I'm telling you that folds only form deeper than 15 kilometers, the rock is warm deeper than 15, so how are we ever going to see these things if they only form down that deep? What's your answer? What's that? I uh, know, we can do better, Devant. Uh, Aiden. Yes. What was our phrase? What was our t-shirt? Oh, we don't have it? Uplift intensifies erosion. This is a cult now. Ready? You're going to say it with me. Uplift intensifies erosion. Uplift intensifies erosion. Uplift intensifies erosion. Yeah. At some point, this is going to be such an extreme collision that we're going to uplift this entire middle area and we're going to erode away. We can do it. We're going to erode away the brittly deformed crust. And in its place, we're going to get places where there are beautiful folds, beautiful warm, big hunk candy bar folds above 10,000 feet elevation. They didn't form at 10,000 feet elevation. They got lifted to that place. So you got the message now. Mountains are places where there's deformation of the crust in both brittle and ductile form, but the temperature of the rock is different and therefore, the style of deformation is different. And when you see photos in just a second of folds up in the high mountains, you have maybe a little bit more to think about than just there's some cool rocks that look like Nike swooshes up there in the mountains. There's a whole story to that development. Questions? Nothing? Tim? Mm, tough one. What temperatures are we talking about? We can't be too high with our temperatures or we're going to melt the whole stuff and we're going to get into the igneous story. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to guess. I don't have a good number for you. Thank you. Any other questions I refuse to answer? Okay, yellow book time. I'm picking up the pace on a much different scale now as far as just kind of... Um, using other props that I have, but this is going to pay off almost every day for us. We go to page 15 and 16. 15 and 16. And it's going to go quick, but this is going to be very, very crucial to us. And we will use these two different faults over and over and over this quarter. What you have on page 15 are the two main types of faults that we have on this planet. Normal faults and reverse faults we now know that they form in cold crust. They are brittle deformation features. But instead of just saying we have a fault, we care about what kind of crack it is, what kind of fault it is. Because as you can see, 
If normal faults exist, they are telling us that the crust is being pulled apart. Here's where you're going to write a few things down. You don't have to, but I encourage you to write a few things down on page 15. These arrows going away from each other, we're going to call that extension. The word extension, crustal extension, is stretching or pulling the crust apart. Crustal extension. And these two arrows at, with the reverse fault picture are compression, crustal compression. Crustal extension for normal faults, crustal compression for reverse faults. That's big. If we find a normal fault in the middle of a desert and we know the age of the normal fault, we can say something about when the crust of that desert was being extended, was being pulled apart, if it's not today. So these are clues to a past collision or stretching or both. So how can we tell the difference between a normal and a reverse fault? You ready? HW, FW. You're still writing on page 15. HW is an abbreviation for hanging wall. Hanging wall. Again, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write this all out. You're just going to have to take some notes as I talk. HW, hanging wall. FW, foot wall. These are mining terms. HW and FW. Hanging wall and foot wall. So both cameras can see these wooden blocks that I've used forever in a day. Notice that I haven't done any earthquakes yet. I haven't moved these blocks at all. To know whether you have a normal fault or a reverse fault, it's a two-step process. And you're young and impatient, and you oftentimes make mistakes because you try to do both steps at the same time. Don't do that, please. Slow yourself down and do two steps when you're trying to decide if you have a normal versus a reverse fault. Step one, which block is the hanging wall and which block is the foot wall? Because you're not going to have these red le letters like I have for you here. A hanging wall, do you know? A, a hanging wall is the block of crust above the fault. Again, you're writing. Definition of a hanging wall. The block of crust above a fault. Foot wall, block of crust below the fault. I haven't moved the blocks yet. I'm just labeling with red letters, with red paint that I used probably in 1988. I drew these on these blocks. Hanging wall, you're above the fault. Foot wall, you're below the fault. This is before you do the earthquakes. This is before you shift the blocks. This is before you do any action whatsoever. It's the step that most students forget about. Now, these are mining terms. So long, once upon a time, you would drill a tunnel along the fault, and people would walk into the tunnel. And their feet would be walking on what? The block that's below the fault. That's, that's why it's called a foot wall. And they would hang their lantern in the olden times. They would hang their lantern from the rock that's above the fault. Got it. Okay, good. Normal faults, according to page 15, do normal faults go up or down? With normal faults, does the hanging wall go up or down? Down. On page 15, you can see it, right? That's the rule. You know you have a normal fault if the hanging wall has shifted down with respect to the foot wall. Let me show you. Ready? I'm going to crustal extend, which means I'm going to pull my hands apart. I'm going to let this hanging wall drop, and that's a normal fault. So one, the first step is label the blocks. The second step is... What did the hanging wall do? If the hanging wall went down, it's a normal fault. The opposite is, if the hanging wall goes up, it's a reverse fault. Ready? Let's make the hanging wall go up. Doink. So to get the hanging wall to go up with the reverse fault, I have to... I have to compress the crust. I have to shorten the crust. That's the only way I can get the hanging wall to go up. But to get the hanging wall to go down with a normal fault, I just relax my hands, and the crust goes down. Okay, let me flip around. Is this the hanging wall or the foot wall? The hanging wall. Is this a hanging wall going up or down? Up. Is this a reverse or, or a, a normal fault? The reverse fault. Did I do comp compression or extension? Compression. You got it. Let's go to the... Uh, These things which I found in the storeroom, which I've, I don't think I've ever used. They're kind of fun. Okay. 
What's this thing? That's the hanging wall. Thank you, Tim. That's the hanging wall. So let me do crustal compression. You can see, right? Hanging wall goes up. I've got two reverse faults now. Can you see it? Now let me do crustal extension. Ooh, ah. Crustal extension, the hanging wall goes down. I have two normal faults. Crustal compression, crustal extension. Help! Is this the hanging wall or the foot wall? Foot wall. Reverse or normal? You got it. Okay? Simple, but effective and useful to us. Now notice on page 16, we have crustal compression with both pictures. Crustal compression. The arrows are coming together. Crustal compression with both pictures. And, it's a, and remember, the rock is warm now, so we're deeper than 15 kilometers, right? We can put ductal deformation on here if we want. We can put rock deeper than 15 kilometers. We can put warm big hunk. We can put a lot of stuff on this if you so choose. But these folds, both anticlines and synclines, are a simple result of crustal compression when the rock is warm. There is not an obvious fold from crustal extension, so don't, don't be bothered by that. We're just focusing on the two obvious folds. And quite often, as I did here with the big hunk, I can make an anticline and a syncline next to each other. They come in pairs or even more than pairs. Okay? Anticline is where it's first grade. The layers are being warped up. The layers are warped down with the syncline. They come in pairs. Questions? Let's get some images and then we'll uh, go to uh, the midterm results. This might go more than five minutes, but uh, I don't know. I don't think we need a full 10 minutes for this. Okay? So you guys can see, you've got a good view. These guys can see well enough. Okay. Uh, mountains. Think faults and folds now, please, from this point forward. Oh, the white balance is screwed up a little bit. Whatever. Uh, it's kind of bleached out for you, maybe not at home, but there's a fault coming right through here, but let's get a better picture. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I, you're a little bleached out on, the, on that big screen, I don't know why, I'll have to try to work with that. Uh, oh, we don't have time, we don't have time, those are animations, this is simple stuff. Oh damn, okay, so you can have, we're talking about earthquakes with faults, right? We've got four separate earthquake lectures in this class, so we'll wait on that. But this is serious topic. It's exciting science, but it is a serious topic. This is a high school track in Taiwan after an earthquake. They didn't even know they had a fault running through the high school. And uh, let's try a little exercise. Uh, those are people standing right at the fault. And behind them is the hanging wall. So did they experience an earthquake on a reverse or a normal fault. Reverse Mason was on it. Hanging wall up, reverse fault. Correct. More. Okay, uh, oil and natural gas. A lot of our oil and natural gas comes from traps and the faults do that for us. Again, you're bleached out, but you've got good eyes, you're young. Um, is this a reverse or a normal fault? I'm hearing reverse. Does is, is everybody agree? Why is it a reverse fault? Tim? Hanging wall went up. Is the hanging wall on the right or left side? Hanging wall is on the right side. Remember, we, I, haven't, I haven't said it. Don't remember. I'm telling you for the first time. There's always an angle to one of these faults. The fault is never vertical. It's always got some kind of an angle to it. And therefore, we have a block of crust above and a block of crust below. So the hanging wall is on the right. The hanging wall went up because you can see that gray limestone layer, let's say, was broken by the fault. Crustal compression. Normal or reverse? 
two-step process. Is it the hanging wall or the foot wall on the left? Why are we struggling with this one? Oh boy, we got problems. Okay. The fault's not vertical. The fault is angling. And we have the hanging wall on the left and the foot wall on the right. And the hanging wall has gone down. This is a normal fault. Make sense to you? Let's keep going. Oh, there's a hippie. Oh, it's long, long day. Uh, Clay Arango still teaches on this campus, but he used to be my student 25 years ago in Titus Canyon in Death Valley. And I'm showing you this not because Clay used to have long hair, but because the rock is so co uh, cold that when you're in a fault zone like this, look at how uh, fractured that bedrock is. So these are earthquakes from thousands, maybe millions of years ago, and yet that, that broken up angular blocks of crust tell us that. There's even a pretty impressive fault south of town. This is on the freeway to Yakima. How many people have been to Yakima, Washington? Eh, half of you. Okay. It's not far away. You know, get out of this foggy valley and drive south 30 miles, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll get down to Yakima. And, you will, and when you drive that, you will cross into Yakima County. And as soon as you cross driving south into Yakima County, what is going on? Why is that so bleached out? I don't get it. I'm sorry about that. Say again. But we didn't have that problem before, did we? It's not just this photo, though. It's Oh, that's making it worse. All right, I'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Well, you, you can be my consultant here. Hope we can figure that out together. I hope you can make this out. Let me come closer. Ah, yeah, shit. Sorry, Patrick. All right. Folds as well. It's at the surface, but we know those folds are forming deeper than 15 kilometers because the rock is warm. Crustal compression or extension? Hello, crustal compression or extension? Compression. These folds are all from crustal compression. That's page 16. These are photos that were emailed to me from one of the townies just a couple days ago. I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. I don't know where these photos are. Oh, I know that one's from. That's a field course that we teach every year. We take people from this class. They decide they want to major in geology. We say, well, let's, let's go. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I just, I'm just thinking about it. No, let's. Van's riding out, got the van outside. It's idling. Let's go. We're going to California. Okay. All right. I guess you're abducting me, but oh, okay, fine. This is a required course, and we map synclines like this. And Polita Folds, it's called, outside of Bishop, California. Ductal deformation. Ductal deformation. You can see how complicated, how beautiful. And, you know, it's not how the earth was made. You have to have some side of collision with warm rock to make it happen. You've got it now. It's our first time contemplating the incredible temperatures, pressures, energy, time that we need to create entire mountain ranges from scratch. Look at that, man. Look at that. I don't know. Big hunk candy bar. I should know, Tim, I don't. Could be the Alps, could be the Andes. Wyoming. I showed you that photo before. That is Ecuador. And also south of Ellensburg, but in the Yakima River Canyon this time, not up over the freeway, there's some brown layers of basalt. You remember basalt that was the pre-cut and ready to be hauled off, Jazz? But maybe if you squint, you can see that's a big old anticline, that the layers are not flat in the Yakima River Canyon, about two-thirds of the way down the canyon. Okay. Um, uh, Hope and I are going to figure out a little bit more about the contrast on the laptop. There's always a challenge to figure out. But it's uh, exactly 1040. It's almost like I've been doing this my whole career. Okay. So pep talk first. More pep talk. And then I'll tell you how we're going to operate.
So you can't be on the phones for this because this is heartfelt. I love that we are here together. The more I realize what's going on on campus, nobody's doing this. Just essentially, nobody's doing this. Hardly anybody is teaching face-to-face. So I've heard from some of you that you specifically signed up for this class because it's face-to-face. And that's wonderful. And I want you to keep coming. We're just getting started in this class. There's a lot of great stuff coming. But i got to be up front with you. Some of you are going to get your feelings hurt. And some of you are going to stop coming because you got your feelings hurt. And I want you to view it differently. I don't really know what goes on in other classes, even before COVID. I don't really know what's going on in other classes. I don't know if you get an A just for showing up. But I've I've got a bar set for all of you. And I, I feel very strongly about getting you up to this bar and beyond it. Everybody in here. And all it takes is dedication and hard work. And coming to class is just the start of it. You can't just show up and listen, kind of, and then expect to do well. There's preparation that's necessary as well. And we will continue to work together on that. So if you scored poorly on this first exam, okay, we got to make some changes. But please don't give up on me. You're going to learn a lot more cool stuff. Maybe you haven't learned any cool stuff yet. I promise there's some really cool stuff coming. And let's not have this test score dismantle all the momentum that we had. It'll dismantle it a little bit, but let's not have it totally screw it up. The other main message is some of you did beautifully, and just keep it up. Whatever you're doing, just keep it up. It's working. You're going to see some letter grades right now, and the letter grades are not real. And what I mean by that is there's no curving, there's no adjusting. I do that at the end of the quarter. I'm just giving you a little general sense of where you are grade-wise, but I will be adjusting to you. I will be working with you. This is a worst-case scenario. But at the same time, I need more out of you if you scored poorly. I, need, I just need more from you, period. And I hope that you're up for it. Casey. There's a pre-test and pre-quizzes. Yes. Uh, I do not. So Casey is asking a common question is like, are there other opportunities to get points besides these three tests and three quizzes? And my answer is no. So that is old fashioned. There's no points for attendance. There's no points for uh, bringing in newspaper clippings. Who the hell reads a newspaper anyway? There's, there's no points for online whatever. And so that is an adjustment. Mason, hang on. That is an adjustment that, that uh, I know up till this point in your high school or middle school classroom, there was, there was tons of, um, you know, like, yeah, it, didn't, it was kind of had a bad day. Let's just give you another chance and we'll keep improving. Um, you're getting too much of this from me now, but uh, it's almost like the geology I'm teaching isn't that important. What maybe is more long-lasting in here is that I really love my job and I work really hard and you get my best every morning and I feel like society needs that. We need everybody to be, you know, maximizing what they can do on a consistent basis. And I feel like just giving you a third try and you didn't feel right that day. Oftentimes in the real world, I hear, I've never been in the real world, but I hear in the real world, you got to perform on a given time. And that's what we're trying to get to here. So I realize, I guess I'm unusual in many respects, but I still believe in that big time. Okay, so you are one of these X's. Um, and last thing I'll say is, uh, I'm going to get off camera here. I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll be with you guys. We'll do some live Q&A in just a few minutes. Hang on if you like. Uh, I'm going to give you your exam. You're going to tell me your last name off camp. Uh, I'm going to leave my mic here. And um, I've got all the answers to the exam uh, on my bulletin board halfway down the hall. So if you're curious why I took seven off or 10 off or whatever, uh, go down the hall with your exam, check it out, make sure you feel like it was graded fairly, and then you're going to come back and you're going to Turn in your exam uh, in the back of the room. You're going to leave your exam with me. Okay?
and then we'll see you uh, tomorrow for another plate tectonic lecture. Thank you. Okay, over here. I'll be with you in three minutes. There's not that many of you, so this will go quickly. I'm off mic, right? You can't hear the last name. Okay, come on over, everybody. I can't let you see other people who got your last name. Everybody, you can check out those answers, I guess, Devon did, but I'm just not going to have this for you. I'll have to bring it tomorrow. Okay, everybody clear? We can talk uh, in a little bit, if you like, but otherwise, um, head down the hall if you want to see the right answers, and uh, see you tomorrow. Mason, yeah. Thank you to the county that brought us cookies. Oh yeah, Mason says thanks for the cookies. Don't forget about the cookies. For the love of God, let's prop those doors open and let's get those cookies into people's mouths. It's important. You're welcome. Good job. Yep, keep it going, buddy. Keep it going. Good, good, good. I'll talk later, Mason. I'll talk later. Okay. You'll find it. You'll find it. Okay. How are we doing? Uh, live Q&A, and then I can visit. Thanks. Good. All right. Uh, uppercase for your questions, please. There's a cookie party happening in the back of the room. Hey, would you guys mind taking your cookies outside? Take that whole tin out there, man. Thanks. Uh, full, uh, Kent, folds on this. Uh, just drop it any place. Thank you. Folds on the scale of gravel, rock, melt, mixing. Yeah, Kent, that uh, the, the the scale of the folds on like a, in a mic in a metamorphic rock, like a migmatite or some other kind of really swirly rock, it's really a different game. It's really a different game. I, I hesitate taking any of today's content and 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 plugging it in that way. Uh, scrolling back. <laughs> I can't get rid of everybody. They're excited, I guess. Saber, aren't some of the most famous faults strike slip? Yes, but we're, we're saving that. There's a whole San Andreas fault lecture. Yep. So just a teaching choice there. More faults, faults and folds questions, crustal deformation stuff. Pat Miller, before the discovery of plate tectonics were exotic terrains a thing. This is way beyond where we are now, but Pat knows about the exotic terrains we were discussing uh, before Christmas. Plate tectonics, 
suffice it to say, plate tectonics solved so many mysteries. So nobody had a clue how to explain many things in mountains until plate tectonic concepts. Even the folds and faults were a mystery. What's the easy way to tell which is the hanging wall? Oh, we could do it this way. So there's always an angle to the fault. And therefore, it, you, you can imagine a little stick person, like my, my fingernail can be a person if you like. And the rock that's above my fingernail is the hanging wall and the rock below my fingernail is the foot wall. And the rock, this is the hanging wall and the foot wall. So you can imagine just, you can actually draw a little tunnel for yourself on the fault and you can have the uh, little vertical stick person in the tunnel and the, the feet are always gonna be in the foot wall. It even works for an angle of fault that's a, a low angle fault. Pedro, you good? Okay. Does uplift also intensify glacial erosion? Thanks, Tim. Um, glacial deposits are so young that the rate of erosion and the rate of uplift are, are not a factor. In other words, the uplift is fast over geologic periods of time, but many of the glacial deposits have only been there 15,000 years or less. And so there just hasn't been enough time to have a bunch of uplift. Andy, will plate tectonics cease in the future? Well, we're going to talk about what we know and what we don't know about plates in the next few days. These next few lectures are really important for this class, so I hope that you can continue to be with us Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. And um, I'm still not convinced we understand why plates move. We know that plates move, but I, th I don't think we still totally understand why they're moving. And you're like, oh, come on. I learned that in eighth grade. There's convection within the mantle and that drives the plates. Well, there's something about that that doesn't feel satisfying to me. And therefore, it's difficult to explain the future of plate motion when we don't really understand the mechanics of plate motion, in my opinion. BH, what if I cannot see the interior? New one that has not been tunneled. Well, then it's impossible. If you're just walking on the surface, if you're just walking around on the surface and you have no way to see underneath the crack, then there's no way to tell the difference of a normal versus reverse fault. You need that cross-sectional view, that three-dimensional view. Yeah, slab pull. That's a, that's a, that's a model, but I, I, Adam, I just... That's just me, I think. There's just a few that aren't, you know how science works. Sometimes there's a model that everybody just signs off as, well, that's for sure what's going on. And then, and then it kind of changes. The data doesn't change, but the ideas change. And as you get new data, then you realize that there's kind of changed models that are better fit to the data. So there's, there's, Conventional messages out there about white plate moves. Jeremy, hello. Just figured out who you were. You're watching me and come on up here if you want and see how this works a little bit. Not too close, I guess, but could you sit over there uh, so you can see a little bit of how I'm operating? Can you be over there? So I, I want to keep my mask down, but you can kind of get a sense. That's uh, Bob and Kathy there as well. Um, can you get folding outside of mountain building? Bones, thank you for the question. I think so, yes. I, I, it's a teaching choice to kind of talk about mountains and be as being kind of the main deformational zone, but I don't know how to give you a good example except, um, you know, Nive uh, even that, but more or less, yes. <laughs> 
Yes, it's tied to mountains of some form. Uh, cannot a, I can't say uh, cosmic cosmic J. Cannot a number of factors contribute to plate transport? Sure. Uh, Chris, why are there smaller plates like Juan de Fuca or Scotia? So obviously we're kind of working ahead with our questions, but that's great. I mean, I'm not going to have time to answer all the questions when we get to our classic plate tectonic session. So my, why not handle a few right now? Um, so with this group, we will, I guess early next week, yeah, Monday, we'll actually learn together what a tectonic plate is, technically. And we'll learn a plate tectonic geography. It's one of the pages in the yellow book. And then we'll get a little bit more advanced and go, well, that's just today. Plates change their size. They change their direction. We have evidence to document that. And in some cases, plates break into smaller plates. Now, now, notice I'm not saying why, but I am describing based on all sorts of wonderful evidence that let's say the Farallon plate has broken into smaller chunks like the Juan de Fuca. And the Juan de Fuca has broken into smaller chunks like the Explorer and the other one I can't remember at the moment. So it's, it's tempting to go too far with plate tectonic discussion. And, and that's, it's going to be hard for you to even get a sense of what I mean with that. I think until you see how I lay out the basics of plate tectonics. But a little hook for you, if you want to, cont I don't know, are you watching all these? Are you just kind of picking one or two that interests you? I don't know. That, I didn't lay these out like the exotic terrain sessions where there was A, B, C, D, and I felt like people had to watch all of them to really make sense of what we were doing in session T. Um, I don't know if you're watching all these or not like getting caught up on replays before you watch this one or whatever. But that might be more of an issue from this point forward, as you heard me talk to the students in the little pep talk. Um, I forgot where I was even going with that. So I'm scrolling kind of live here and going back and forth, and I'm visualizing you doing this as well. Just a, uh, one of the grad students is here, and a few grad students are needing for a science communication class that they're taking, they need to talk to a live audience. And of course, that's not an easy thing to do during the current situation. So a little bit later, I guess in February sometime, uh, at the end of one of our sessions, I'm gonna turn it over to a grad student and the grad student's gonna give a, about a 20 minute talk. So one of them's in here right now at a safe distance kind of watching what I'm doing. Of course he is. He's the, he's an overachiever. And you're going to talk about some sort of fancy math. I, I can, I can just feel it. I keep pulling into it. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's Jeremy talking about math that I don't understand. And, and that I'll, I'll let you know when that's happening. Uh, H David says, uh, Africa is breaking in two at the great rift Valley. That is so true. A um, couple more questions and I think we'll quit. Dale, are extension faults for forcing plates together? And then why Appalachian Mountains not growing? Let's finish with that one, Dale, and I'll, I'll give you a sense of the scale of this. So you remember... A while back, me talking about the idea that rocks can tell stories. Like you, you study a certain rock. This is not a rock. Who a big hunt? You can look at the rock. Oh, it's a warm. It's a it's a limestone. It's got marine fossils in it. The rock tells a story, and and that works for students of all ages. But these folds and these faults tell stories as well. Not the rocks, but the actual deformation. Like, why is that deformation there? And uh, whoever it was is asking about the Appalachians. 
Now, again, you're hearing me talk about this, and my choice is to say we really ultimately don't know why these plates are moving the direction that they're moving. We don't ultimately understand why plates change direction. And they're moving east, they're moving east for a while, and then they're moving west for a while. I don't think we totally understand that. But you can make some mistakes and say that, oh, how do I want to do this? Let's make these the Appalachians. The Appalachian Mountains in eastern North America. West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Stone Mountain, Georgia, Nova Scotia, whatever, okay? And we've addressed the Appalachians to this point by saying that this mountain range is the result of two continents colliding. And those two continents were part of something bigger called tectonic plates. Plates and continents, not the same thing. You'll see that tomorrow. But the Appalachians exist as a mountain range, and the Appalachians have all this brittle and ductally deformed crust as a result of that collision between Africa and North America, or Eurasia and, and North America, or Africa and South America. Oh, that's not the Appalachians. Okay. So the anticlines and synclines, crustal compression. The reverse faults that are in the Appalachians, crustal compression, according to today's lecture. But we know that at a certain point, the collision stopped. And it didn't just stop. The opposite of a collision began. Pulling the crust apart. Developing a new set of faults. Normal faults with the hanging walls going down. Normal faults say us what? You find a normal fault, what does that mean? Crustal extension. And so in the Appalachians, there are old reverse faults, compression, and younger normal faults, extension. Do you see how now we can tell a story? Not by looking at the rocks, but by simply looking at what kind of faults are there. And the fact that the Appalachians have both reverse and normal faults in the same frickin' mountain range tells us of this story of colliding to make the range and then starting 180 million years ago breaking that range in two and Africa goes away from us as we go west for the first time in a long time. What's bigger down here driving the whole thing? That's where you toss in your favorite idea, but all we're doing is describing the details at the surface. We're looking at the field data and we're knowing when the Appalachians formed and when they started to get broken up. All right. I still see a tin of cookies back there. Oh, I see a tin. I hope that most of the cookies are gone. If anybody's in this class uh, trying to um, lose weight, it's probably not going to go well this quarter for them. And I do thank you for joining us this morning. Um, there's only one more day that we will be cutting the lectures short to go through test results. That will be after midterm two. Otherwise, you'll get the full experience each time. And so programming-wise, tomorrow morning, Monday and Tuesday, those lectures all go together. And that's where, as you'll hear me tell the students, it's the train is leaving the station in this class. I'm hoping to get as many people on the train as possible. But if they're not in class for the next few days, or they're with us physically but not mentally, uh, we're leaving them back on the platform at the train station, and uh, they're not going to be able to catch up. I'm telling them that. This is a big part of the class, and so I'm glad you found us and got to this point. But it's building, 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 and then after the next midterm, it's nothing but Washington geology and using all of these plate tectonic skills. 
that we were able to put together during this crucial part of the class. Okay, I need to talk to Jeremy, a couple other visitors in the room. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, okay. I didn't see scrolling there for a while. I got a little nervous. I was talking to nobody, but you're here. Okay. I always forget something. This morning I forgot my mug. Here's to you. And your health. Oh, why not? It's bleach, you know. It's... Here's to the health of your parents and your grandparents and your children and your grandchildren. Here's to the essential workers who continue to do heroic things uh, on an hourly minute-by-minute minute basis even, all over the world, hospitals and everything else. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning, Friday, 10 a.m. Don't be late. Goodbye. I love you. <laughs>